The endless flat horizon of the Kalahari is broken in eastern Botswana by a range of rocky hills. A pair of black eagles soars near the largest range of hills, known as Swapong. Their aerobatics declare their attraction and bond to each other. These are the most accomplished aviators in the eagle world. The black eagle rules the skies over Swapong. Eagles still soar over Botswana villages, where life continues in the rural tradition. The Swapong Hills are surrounded by many villages, but the hills themselves are uninhabited because of the presence of powerful spirits. Gorges cutting deep into the hills are believed to be home to the spirits of the ancestors of the Botswana people, the Badimo. The Badimo live at the head of each gorge. The villagers are afraid of the spirits and leave the sacred gorges untouched. So the black eagle lives and breeds in an undisturbed sanctuary. The most sacred part of the gorge is at the head, where pure water bursts from the bare rock. The sacred hills of Swapong lie to the east of Botswana. The surrounding flatlands suddenly give way to sheer cliffs hundreds of feet high. Updrafts lift the eagles effortlessly into the sky. The black eagle is a large and powerful predator. The cliff's other residents are rightfully wary of it. But for the moment, the eagle doesn't have hunting on its mind. Red cliffs, washed white, reveal the roosts of the cliff's largest resident, the Cape Vulture. Smaller and more inaccessible ledges provide nest sites for hundreds of other birds, like swifts and starlings, and offer a degree of protection from predators, but not from the artful Gymnogene, the sneak thief of the cliff face. The Gymnogene reaches the parts other predators cannot reach. The rocky terrain attracts a wide variety of specialized residents. Chakma baboons are fantastic rock climbers. They keep an eye on their territory from lookout posts where they bask in the morning sun. Hyraxes use the rocks like radiators in the cold mornings. and the myriad crevices are occupied by a myriad crevice dwellers. This long-nosed insect eater is an elephant shrew. Although it's only a few inches long, it is fast and agile 
and colonizes all the rocky areas. Crevice and Cliff are home to a range of wildlife unlike any other in Botswana. A couple of hours of morning sun warms the cliffs enough to raise thermals for the vultures to soar on. Once the vultures reach the top of the thermal, they peel off and head across the arid plain in search of carrion. Eight-foot wings carry them with grace and speed. But the short ledges call for a sudden stop. One hundred and fifty pairs of vultures roost in the hills and competition for the best ledges is fierce. For a short while, their numbers will be growing. They're about to raise their young, and all efforts are concentrated on mating and nest building. The search for nesting material takes them to the wooded base of the cliffs. Here they deliberate over the perfect stick, usually the one in another vulture's beak. Nests soon fill the cramped ledges. Nest refinement is an ongoing activity, and extra material can always be found nearby. Vultures become so concerned with the exact placement of sticks that they don't notice where the rest of the nest is heading. Although Cape vultures are highly sociable birds, competition is intense at this time of year, and they must guard their nest sites fiercely. The black eagle usually hunts small mammals, but an easy meal is always welcome. They regularly survey the vulture's cliffs for unprotected eggs and nestlings. These raids are more common when the eagles have young to feed. A pair of eagles will alternate between two or three nest sites over the years. This nest is built in a hillside baobab tree. As usual, two eggs were laid and two hatched, but the older chick has done away with the younger. Both parents feed and hunt for it during the 14 weeks it stays in the nest. The chick's appetite will keep them busy for most of each day.
as well as fresh meat, the adults bring fresh greenery to line the nest and shade the chick from the sun. The eagles are not the only ones searching for greenery on the hills. A medicine man collects ingredients for traditional medicines. Pods, bark, leaves or roots. He only takes what he needs and never destroys the plants in the process. The unique environment found within the hills offers water and shelter to plants that grow nowhere else in Botswana. The hills are renowned throughout southern Africa for the special plants that grow here. Many fruiting trees grow on the hillsides and the fruit is an important part of the local diet. Swapong has long been a valuable resource to the people of this land. Ancestors left rock paintings perhaps more than 2,000 years ago. Ancient iron smelting sites and paraphernalia are scattered throughout the hills. Some of these date back more than 1,500 years. And thousands of pottery shards litter the ground, making this one of the most important prehistoric sites in southern Africa. Today, the tops of the hills, away from the sacred gorges, are still used to gather thatching grass for the surrounding villages. The villages are not far from the base of the hills. Water flows out to them year-round, and life is good. The Badimo guide the people, bring them rain, and cure their illnesses through the medicine men. A recent incident strengthened beliefs in the Badimo, if they needed strengthening at all. Sir Saretsi Kama was the founding president of modern Botswana, and a descendant of a long line of Botswana chiefs. When he died, a great rock crashed from this cliff into the river below. The gorges are sacred and run deep into the hills. The permission of local chiefs is needed before anyone can enter them. A few miles away is the arid Kalahari, but here trickling water produces lush and delicate greenery. The pools at the head of the gorges are especially sacred. Here, great snakes protect the Badimo. Green gorges are the home to much of the unexpected wildlife of Swapong. Tall forest trees line the high cliffs of the gorges creating a shady retreat. Some of these trees are found nowhere else in Botswana. Fig trees are laden with fruit like a garden of Eden. And vervet monkeys thrive in the thick vegetation, gathering fruit from the trees and enjoying shelter from the sun. Water also emerges from rocks outside the gorges.
Wherever it appears, it is considered sacred. And to have healing properties. And in a desert, water is simply the source of all life. The hot, noisy cliffs of the vultures above seem a world apart. Squabbles still erupt over nest sites. Many pairs have not found suitable sites, even though others have laid eggs. the eggs have hatched, the adults are busy tending the young. Latecomers have only the less desirable ledges left to them, or none at all. Nests are packed onto and into every nook and cranny, and they provide excellent cover for the insects this shrew is after. The elephant shrew gets its name from its long, flexible nose. Although it looks like a mouse, it's an insect eater, more closely related to bats. The vulture chicks will spend almost five months on the ledge before fledging. At this age, they're seldom left alone for long as they're vulnerable to airborne attack. The adults are keen-eyed, wary, and very protective of their young. They can growl at the eagles, but they can't outmaneuver them. The eagle needs to find meat for its young, but these chicks are well guarded. Vulture chicks aren't a staple of the eagle's diet. That position is taken by the hyrax. These curious looking primitive mammals are unlikely relatives of the elephant. They occur widely across Africa, always found on the same rocky terrain as black eagles. And it's here that the eagles, often hunting as a pair, like to surprise them. They build up speed on the far side of the hill, then swoop over the crest to surprise whatever lies in their path. But their plans are foiled by a Franklin. So the pair separates. A Hyrax lookout takes up the alarm cry but it hasn't seen the other eagle approaching from behind. Once warm, hyraxes can run fast, and they scatter over the rocks looking for cover between the boulders. to wait a while before hunting this hillside again. Swapong is home to wildlife great and small. 
a beautiful gallery of rust-colored rocks, provides canvases for abstract patterns of lichens. In the heat of the day, some of the smaller animals emerge to forage. Mocking chats are on the hunt for insects. Flat lizards lie in wait for a meal. It's all a matter of scale and scales. A fallen boulder becomes a great cliff for an armor-plated rock climber. A male flat lizard, called a platysaurus, displays his striking livery. His brightly colored underside proclaims his territory to other males. Always on the lookout for a juicy meal, the shrew scouts the insect-filled crevices. But it needs to be careful. Many other animals would consider the shrew a tasty meal. These are the coils of the venomous puff adder, and its main prey is small, warm-blooded mammals. It can sense body heat in special pits on its head, so it can track the shrew without actually seeing it. The fascinated flat lizards become animated by the puff adder's progress. They jolt and jar, as the adder flows in liquid locomotion. But they can't afford to get distracted. Small reptiles are the favored prey of many of the hawks, eagles, and falcons that live in Swapong. In fact, Swapong is a bird of prey paradise. Rock kestrels are particularly partial to small lizards. They have their own territory to defend and are agitated by the presence of the black eagle. When eagles get too close, the feisty kestrels think nothing of going on the attack. The message is clear. This side of the cliff is Kestrel territory. The harried eagle moves on. It must still find food for its young. It spots a chance and plans a sudden attack. Storming through the skies, it strikes with ease. The rock pigeon was cornered and didn't stand a chance. takes the pigeon down to a tree in the gorge to be plucked before returning to the chick. The bottoms of the gorges stay green year round thanks to the constant supply of water percolating through the rocks. 
most of the wildlife in the hills is linked to this miraculous resource. Clouds rising above the range drop rain on the hilltops, which soaks down through the soft rock. When it reaches harder rock, it bursts from the cliffs. Water is the sacred heart of Swapong, and Swapong is a rare oasis in the arid Kalahari. A goat-sized antelope is perfectly adapted for life in the rocky hills. The clipspringer tiptoes like a ballet dancer on points across near vertical rock faces. Unusual springy hair gives it a dense coat that protects it from heat, cold and sharp rocks. Clipspringers and their young are vulnerable to predators both from the air and the ground. Attack from the black eagle is a very real threat to the lamb. When threatened, the lamb retreats to long grass and stays still. Adults can outrun most land animals on the steep rocks, even the powerful leopard. Surprisingly, some leopards still live in the thickly wooded gorges, despite the closeness of the Botswana villages. Baboons are preyed on by both eagle and leopard and don't appreciate either as neighbors. Leopards are shy of humans and hide themselves in the depths of the hills they're seldom seen. Like the eagles, they are unintentionally protected by the villagers' fear of the spirits. Once the panic has died down, the baboons return to their foraging in the woods and cliffs. They're nimble and confident on the rock faces. The rocks are refuges for numerous small animals that the baboons can feed on. also find water high up in the cliffs. The gymnogene uses the cover of the woods to raise its young. The female makes final adjustments to the loosely made nest while she incubates her eggs. This unusual hawk is a one-off the only member of its family. Its body is well adapted to its hunting habits. Long legs, a small head, and an unusually lightweight frame hidden beneath its gray plumage. It can display in a manner that seems quite shameful, a coy blush. The name gymnogene means bare cheeks, but the meaning of the facial display is not clear. It is common when a mated pair is near to each other or is excited. After two months, the eagle chick has grown substantially and feathers are breaking through its down. This time, the hyrax hunt was more successful. On the cliff face, the vulture colony is bursting at the seams.
rapidly growing chicks occupy nearly all the ledges. They may be young, but some already have four-foot wingspans and even bigger appetites. Every crack and crevice is alive with breeding birds. Red-winged starlings sandwich nests into the narrowest fissures, while swifts glue theirs underneath. But no crack is too narrow or inaccessible for the gymnogene. enable it to float up and down the cliffs with ease. lightweight body lets it hang onto the bare rock. Its small head pries tiny gaps, while its long flexible legs fish nestlings out of the deepest holes. The starling's desperate protests won't distract the hawk for long. The gymnogene knows the nestlings are here and will be back. It has a chick to feed. Vervet monkeys are too big to be caught by gymnogenes. They're still at risk from the much larger eagles. They spend much of their time in the thick cover of the trees. Like the eagle chick, this gymnogene hatchling has done away with its sibling and demands constant feeding. Its parents won't return empty-handed. A second dash at the cliffs was successful and the parent presents a starling. The gymnogene chick is in no danger from the troop of monkeys below. They're mainly vegetarian and scar the forest for ripe fruit. And there always seems to be something in fruit throughout the year. With a harvest as abundant as this, the vervets can afford to be fussy about what they eat. They reject all but the choicest fruit. The platysaurus is also interested in the fruit, although it doesn't find it easy to eat. And a plated lizard, a fuller-bodied relation, is taken with the fruit too.
the animals vary their diets to take advantage of these opportunities. The shrew welcomes a free lunch. Everything comes to the lizard that waits. A furry army of caterpillars is on maneuvers. And the lizard knows just how to maneuver them to get their poisonous hair off. With lunch taken care of, he spends some time attracting the opposite sex. Perhaps he should have taken a longer lunch. Bright colors aren't confined to the lizards. Spectacular aloes grow along the cliffs and gorges. Their fiery flowers brighten the landscape and provide food for nectar sippers and blossom eaters. Some plants act as larders for a whole host of dainty tree squirrels. until the dainty tree squirrel ends up in the larder of the gymnogene. The chick is almost big enough to feed itself and might make a better job of it. Its parent has lost the little corpse in the loosely formed nest, much to the annoyance of the chick which impatiently watches the rescue operation. The adult seems taken aback by the nestling's outbursts, but remains intent on retrieving the hard-gained squirrel. This is where multi-jointed legs come in handy. A moment of hope or frustration. But it looks like the remains of the little squirrel have gone for good. Perhaps it's time to make another visit to the cliffside larder. More and more hyraxes make the one-way journey to the black eagle's nest. At three and a half months, the youngster is the size of an adult, but looks very different. It won't get its adult plumage for another four or five years. But in a few more weeks, it will fledge and take to the skies over Swapong. The vulture chicks are almost fully grown too. Just making the way to a roost is a hazardous affair and risks running the gauntlet of sharp beak and striking claw. A pair that hasn't bred yet tries to take over a ledge from an almost fully grown chick. Amazingly, the youngster manages to fend them off until its parent saves the day. It 
won't be long before the chick can fly and fend for itself. But some chicks will never fly. They're afflicted with osteodystrophy, a bone disease similar to rickets. The environment beyond the hills is changing. Vultures can't always find enough bone chips to keep their young healthy. The eagles will soon discover any weakness, and with this disease, there are no second chances. There was no way the chick could have survived stranded on the ledge. And now there's one more space in the crowded colony. The dead vulture chick is too heavy to carry, so the eagle eats it where it's fallen. Cape vultures are long-lived birds. The infant mortality rate is high, but they have many years to make up the numbers. A ruckus has broken out in the baboon troop. An unknown male has just walked into the wrong territory. The stranger's presence threatens the standing of the dominant male in the troop. He is not welcome. The troop's dominant male stood his ground and drove the intruder off. A clipspringer nervously inspects the cause of the commotion. But the excitement is over and the victorious male is groomed by his appreciative troop. This gentle activity reaffirms their rank and relationships. Excited youngsters can't keep their energy down and start to play. Finally, all remaining tension is dispelled. The 
the end of each day finds the villagers in their homes. In the traditional huts, everyone heads inside, and not just because it's dinner time. The spirits of the ancestors are active after dark. Villagers extinguish fires outside, so the spirits don't burn their feet in the night. Anything else active at night is associated with the spirits and is to be feared. This giant cricket is watched with a mixture of nervousness and fascination. In fact, the villagers fear all nocturnal animals, no matter how large or small. The brown hyena means no harm to humans. It's just after an easy meal, maybe some bones or a scrap of skin. Despite their fear of the dark, some people actually head for the hills at night. Swapong is a sacred place to nearby residents of all faiths. A Christian sect climbs up the hills to pray. The service will last till dawn, and when the morning brings rain, their beliefs will be all the stronger. The sacred presence of Swapong is waning. Already the sacred gorges and hilltops are being used for cattle grazing. The hills can't support large-scale grazing, and the disturbance in the fragile gorges will drive out indigenous wildlife. Times are changing in the villages. Modern houses are built now, and technology has been embraced by some. If technology becomes the new religion, then Swapong's spirits may be forgotten. And if they are, who will protect the wildlife? Swapong is unique in Botswana. Its microclimate brings rain clouds and mists to the edge of the Kalahari. Its inaccessibility, its water and sacred significance have allowed specialized wildlife to flourish for thousands of years. And this year, the vulture colony has flourished. The last chicks are fledging, testing their eight-foot wings on the breeze. Soon, they will make the leap that will free them from the crowded cliffs and open up the lands beneath them. To the ancient Egyptians, the vulture was the symbol of longevity, its outstretched wings adorning temple doorways. Let's hope that the vultures on Swapong symbolize its longevity in a changing world. If Swapong does survive, its rulers have an heir to succeed them. 
As the young eagle sheds its juvenile brown feathers for regal black, she will learn the graceful and agile flight of her parents. Hopefully, the timeless battle between eagle and vulture will continue, like the timeless battle between technology and tradition. If the thirst for knowledge can be tempered with respect for the past, then Swapong will remain the sacred haunt of eagles. <laughs>